couldn't ask for a better morning than this. It is so beautiful out here. The sun is shining. The cars are shining. But I'm having an issue with my SL55. Now, the convertible top, it retracts or, yeah, retracts. And then when trying to close back, it's slowing down. It gets to a stuck position and it like slows down and doesn't complete the closing process. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate it because I got it to finally close. But it's that last little bit of closure that it's having a hard time doing. You hold the or you lift or no, I guess you're pushing down on this button right here long enough. It probably took about three minutes for it to finally close. That's scary because if I'm driving and I decide to close the top, you know, uh, say it's raining. Well, now it's stuck and it wouldn't finish closing. So you had a large gap, of course. You guys know what I'm talking about. And so I put everything out to see what's going on. And my pump fluid is, in my eyes, low. It shouldn't be that low. Now, the previous owner, he had everything done, from what I understand. This car came out of Orlando, Florida. He had all the cylinders of the pistons, uh, or the struts, whatever you call them, the mechanisms that cause the top to open and close efficiently and effectively. He had all those replaced, all of them. He spent a whole lot of money, and that's why I bought it. This is a 03 SL55 R230 AMG. And I received this uh, with the ABC non-functioning. Uh, initially, he was going to be a client of mine, and I was going to do the coilover conversion for him. Then he decided to go ahead and just sell me the car. It only had 78,000 miles on it when I bought it. You already know the very first thing that I did was put Silver's Neo Mass adjustable coilovers on there. So that remedied that problem. And I figured it was a good investment because... The top had just received all this major work done to it. Now, it's been working flawlessly without any issues or concerns. But then finally, recently, the top was having a hard time closing. And I, and I think it started to slow down before that actually happened. It took a little bit longer for it to finally close. But, I mean, it was always closing, though. It might have been slightly delayed, but now it's obviously delayed. And I was afraid that it wouldn't finish closing. Now, the pump, the fluid, like I said, is low. It's supposed to be between those two arrows. It's obviously not. Is that the issue? And if that is the issue, which I assume it is, why? Why is the fluid low? Now, typically you guys who are familiar with these cars will start to see seepage and you'll start seeing the bacon effect where that trim will start to uh, wave. It'll be saturated with oil and it will start to wave. The number one indicator that you have leakage besides the actual leakage or you have history of leakage is that warped trimming. I don't have any kind of oil seepage. I don't see any oil. Could it have always been kind of low, just at that borderline? Hmm. When they redid everything, did they not fill it up all the way? I don't know. Now, what is this? Again, this gentleman, the previous owner, really took care of this car and put a lot of money and time into it. And look what I have here. What is this? This looks like an oil. What type of oil is it? It's brand new in a package. Ah, oh, this is for tires. Hmm. I never knew that there was an oil or container for tires. What the heck is this? Well, the paperwork right here is referring to tire fit. But what's actually in this bottle? Let me okay, see. Well, Mercedes always thinking. Uh, a lot of these SLs don't have a flat tire. Um, the AMGs. Uh, when you pull out the, the, the rear carpeting and liner of the trunk, you won't find a spare necessarily, but you will find this. Now, in this case, this customer never used it. It was still brand new in the package, this customer. I mean, this previous owner of this vehicle. Uh, tire fit. This is like Fix-A-Flat. Comes with this little tubular 
little connection right there. A little cap with the tube attached. That's pretty dope. Yeah, this is pretty nice, man. Mercedes is always thinking ahead, right? Always thinking ahead. But I saw a liquid and I just was hoping, like, hey, hydraulic fluid. That's all right. I have some Pitocin that I can use uh, for the top. But I have to top that, uh, I have to put some of that fluid in there. Let me make sure I have the right fluid for that convertible top. You know what? I do have some. Oh my goodness. Wait a minute. Time out. I bought a kit, a repair kit for the SL for the convertible top, like the old little O ring repair for the little cylinders, and it has fluid. Oh, snap. I do have what I need. All right. Let me put this stuff up. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Pretty dope. Good job, Mercedes. Always thinking. So yeah, they don't come with a flat tire. Some of them don't. <laughs> a spare tire, um, whatever you call it. Um, uh, but it did come with this, and it also has that compressor. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Mercedes is pretty cool when it comes to ideas and thinking about worst case scenarios and preparing the owner for it. Here it is. Now, I don't recommend you guys putting stuff on top of your cars like this on the hood, but I'm doing it because this car is going to get a whole new paint job. There's already scratches in on this car, so don't worry about it. <laughs> this is my final SEC 85, 1985 Euro spec. Nah. Okay, here it goes. Here we go, here we go. This is what I have. Now, this came along with instructions. On how to replace a damaged um, O-ring for your roof locking hydraulic cylinder. Um, it's common, of course, on these SLs for there to be some type of leak or compromised O-ring. And so these are the necessary tools to do it yourself. And these are the instructions. I ordered this years ago, never used it, but it explains how, why, It occurs, how to repair it. What else comes in here? I guess there's another one. All right. Maybe I have two, I don't know. And here goes the syringe in order to, and, uh, you insert that into the pump. And that's how you fill it with uh, fluid. Also, a little prick here, a little tool to remove the O-ring, the old one, to install the new one. All right, so I guess I evidently opened this up before to see what all I have. So yeah, pretty dope. Oh yeah, by the way, I sell this on my website. <laughs> All right, so here we go. The pump in the rear of the vehicle in the trunk. Now I already removed the two screws. These are Allen key required screws. These right here. They have a nice little O-ring on it for sealing purposes. You see, they both are the same size screw. So if you get them confused, it doesn't matter. But what is different is that one is used to fill and one is used to allow the air to escape. So the top one looking down or the one closest to the front of the vehicle is the one that you use to uh, add fluid. And again, the bottom releases the air so that it can accept it. It releases the pressure. Now again, my level should be between those arrows. But I question, why is it low? Now I've had the vehicle in my possession for a year and the top has worked very well. I'm not gonna say it's not slow because I've had it so long, I don't really know what fast is. It's only operated at the same pace since I've had it up until recently. Now, the issue I do have 
is that roll bar does not automatically um, go down um, when the top is trying to work. You have to manually, or with the button, you know, you have those buttons, uh, you have to manually drop that roll bar uh, before the vehicle works. Now, I got it to work one time, all right, uh, on its own, but <laughs> every other time, all the other hundred uh, times that I've opened and closed my, uh, my top, that roll bar will not function on its own. That could be an indicator of low fluid from what I've read. So I've never checked the fluid level of this vehicle. So I don't really know if it was kind of low before. If it's too low, your pump has to work too hard. And that's bad because the pump can burn up. So make sure that your fluid uh, level is good. All right. Fortunately, I'm here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we don't have beautiful days like this every day. You know, we have just a few months of beautiful sunshine enabling us to drop the top so we're not going to drop the top as often as if i lived maybe in florida or some or california or something like that so what i'm going to use now is the syringe i'm going to slowly add fluid take your time try not to make a mess it's good if you have maybe a, a rag or some type of cloth or something to catch any uh, excessive residue that doesn't <laughs> or fluid that doesn't make it inside the pump if you go too fast you just don't want to make a mess back here especially if it's this pretty you know what i'm saying all right so i just grabbed this real quick you might ask what size allen key is this man i don't know just get one that fits <laughs> you see what i did i always experiment right i just grab a whole bunch of them because i have like hundreds of them so grab a handful and see which one fits <laughs> That is so unprofessional, hold on. So, for those who don't know how to use a syringe, when you pull back, that sucks. When you push down, it pushes the fluid out. So, I'll simply pull up on this fluid with one hand. Of course, it's easier if I had two hands. All right, so the fluid now is inside the syringe. And then you just simply insert it. Now the tubing on here goes, it fits right in that hole. And just slowly push, slowly push. Is it important to know how many cc's or uh, the measurement or the amount that you put in there? Not really. Just know how low it is. And uh, I mean, I guess if you want to know how much you add it if you're keeping a record of how much fluid you've had to put inside of your pump it can indicate how much uh leakage you have if you have some type of compromised system or in milliliters i said cc this is milliliters sorry about that and you should start to see your fluid level slowly rise it'll be very slow to rise but the fluid is going inside the pump very slowly very slowly no need to rush guys take your time you know i really appreciate this vehicle uh, i was just bragging on it the other day i'm talking about how perfect this car is and how i love it and how i probably drive this car more than my other cars because it's just so fun to drive it's so quick shoot i loved it i love the uh i loved when i had the sl500 this is a 5.5 though so it's way more powerful but shoot i loved the 500 i mean i just love these cars period after silver's neomax coilovers installed man it really drives like a car with confidence with purpose with aggression The ability to push it to its limits and know what your car is doing you really feel in touch with your car it is now a a driver's car for those who like to really feel and know what their car is doing and push it and know its limitations without depending on a super smart complex hydraulic system suspension system connected to modules and sensors and a computer that tells it when to do this and when to do that so it constantly adjusts dampening and height and 
anti sway. You don't even need sway bars with ABC because that thing is always thinking. But guess what? It's always failing too. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's a lot of fluid I'm putting in here. I don't know why it was low, guys. I don't know. But yeah, this is by far one of my favorite cars to own, an SL. And so I'll do whatever I have to do to keep this thing on the road. Will I drive this car with the top not working? Yeah. <laughs> it's still an awesome car. Shoot. This car with the top up looks as good as it does with the top down. But you still want a convertible. You want to be able to use the convertible. <laughs> Drop the top on a perfect day like this. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day to drop the top. Now, again, I, I just did not know. I never checked the fluid level. It was dead on pump. I should have. I should have done so so that I knew or have a baseline setting as to where it's currently at so that if something were to go wrong, I, I, I know. Like, oh, well, it used to have this much in it. Now it only has this much in it. I can't say that. I don't know how low it was when I first got this car. I know what the proper level is. I don't know what it was. Whenever you open up this system, you have to replace what was lost. I mean, this could be an instance of the pump now getting weak. If it's been operating with low level, like a low fluid level, this could now be an instance or an example of a pump that is now weaker. I'm not hearing any kind of loud noises. You, you seldom do. I mean, sometimes you'll hear the pump trying, but with only me operating this car, trying to close the top, I didn't have an extra set of ears to listen if the pump was straining. That would be indicated that the pump is low on fluid or that the pump is just weak. All right, so you see how many times I've done it so far. I mean, goodness. Now, I, I recommend doing it on a flat ground. Um, I'm at a slight decline because I'm in my driveway, which has an angle to it. So my level will be a little bit off, but just take that into consideration and try to do it on a flat surface. This is a lot of fluid, bro, dang. See, that scares me. Some people are afraid to add more fluid because now the fluid, if it is leaking out of one of those cylinders, well, you're about to get it inside your car because it has nowhere else to go. So it's gonna leak out and I'll get the bacon trim. I don't want that. So if I push this tube all the way down, there's a little bit of blockage there. So kind of keep it elevated a little bit inside the hole, but not touching or not bottoming out. It allows you to push the fluid in a little faster. Why am I recording this long, slow process? Sorry. Patience is virtue, as they say. see where it's set now I'm not gonna lie I'm afraid to pull this top back and try it again because what if it gets stuck <laughs> I'm scared yeah. <laughs> man there's nothing worse than your top not finishing closing that's some scary stuff you all know what the process of the top is the retraction process and the closing process it's pretty cool it's like a transformer or something. This will probably be the last amount I put in. Because if it was, uh, if there's a major leak in there, well, this is just more fluid to come out. I mean, it's been, it's been operating just fine. All of a sudden it's low on fluid. Well, there's more fluid in there now. So it should operate. 
So this is at its lowest, lowest point, that arrow, the upper point is, is the max level. Uh, maybe I'll add a little bit more, try to get it in the middle, because this is you know, indicating, I guess low. I, sometimes the arrow means when the top is down versus when the top is up. I think in this case, it's, it's just, you know, when the fluid is at its lowest, and you don't want it above the highest point, you want it right there in the middle, is what I assume. If I'm wrong, correct me, let me know. Okay, so I decided to stop it right there. It's above the lowest, not all the way to the top. Just like right above the lowest. I just want to see what it does before I keep adding fluid to it. I'm afraid of adding too much. I don't know. <laughs> well, adding too much can cause a problem. I know that. But I just kind of want to keep an eye on that, you know, just... Add enough where it operates. Let's see what it does. I can always add fluid. It's harder to remove, easier to add. Don't over tighten it. It has the rubber seal or o ring. Don't over tighten it. It's not necessary. When you're wiping excess fluid, make sure that you don't get any kind of particles or dirt or debris inside those holes because that will jeopardize the functionality of your pump, AKA it will fail. All right, here goes the compressor that Mercedes wisely included in their vehicles. No spare tire, like I said, AMG seldom come with spares. Um, just, they just choose not to. <laughs> Instead they have the one that drops down gives you added storage space or capacity instead of putting a spare tire down there. Now I'm going to do this on camera. I'm scared. I'm going to operate this top and see if it opens and closes all the way as it should. Make sure this right here is closed because you have a switch inside there that knows when you're cover is clicked in place or not it will not operate if that trunk cover is not closed oh god I'm scared bar is down now I'm curious if the roll bar is up you hear that strain that struggle that's a lot of straining I was holding that button for quite a while now is that air escaping what is it doing why did it take so long for that to come up did I introduce air in the system when I did that now okay here we go see what happens i'm gonna show you guys how this roll bar doesn't go down on its own it wasn't before ah that might have been an indicator that the fluid level was low and that's that's probably why that never worked see that's what i mean guys on one of the forms that i was reading when the fluid level is low Oh my God, it actually worked. See, that could mean, that could be an indicator that your fluid is low when your bar doesn't work on its own. It automatically is supposed to drop and then come back up. It never worked. I, it did it one time, one time. Now it just did it after I added fluid. That is so dope. I might go back there and add some more fluid if the fluid level has dropped. If there's air, if there were air, if there was air in the system, let's just say when they first did all these cylinders, if there, if it barely was enough fluid in there and re not really enough to fully operate properly, because like I said, this roll bar was not going up and down on its own. I had to manually do this separately. So already the system was not operating at its fullest capacity. All right, that's an indicator of that. Remember that, guys. All right. 
So the fluid was already a little bit low. It just got low to a point where it couldn't function anymore. It couldn't finish the process, the closing process. Now let's just see. I'm about to close it back. The roll bar went down on its own. Like I said, guys, it never did that before, never. I had to always manually lower and raise that roll bar. Crazy. Now let's see if this top finishes closing. The roll bar is working on its own. I swear it never did that before. All right, I said a struggle point. See, it's struggling now. The roll bar is not finishing closing. It didn't finish on its own. The roll bar did not finish on its own. So I'm gonna put the phone down and actually help pull the roll bar up because this is this is telling me something, guys. All right, guys. So I went back to this pump. Yeah, there's a leak somewhere because I just pulled this back. Let's take a look at the level in that pump. That pump is low again, guys. There's a leak somewhere. Can you see it? The level is low in the pump. So the fluid is coming out of somewhere. There's something that's compromised. It's empty. So there's a leak somewhere, guys. So the pump, uh, the system can't finish closing. I'm waiting for that drip. It's somewhere. There's something going on. That got it. That pump has never made that much noise when operating. So there's a leak somewhere. So let me go ahead and add some more fluid to this thing so that it can finish closing. And I'm leaving it alone. <sighs> okay. All right, so I got it to work. Now what I did is I added more fluid to it. So while the top was back, while it was still lifted, I added more fluid to that uh, pump and that enabled it to finish closing. So that's telling me that there is a leak. Well, it's tripping now. Hold on. Sometimes this car does weird things with this trunk. So there is obviously a leak somewhere. I'm gonna add some fluid one more time, but there is something that is uh, compromised because you saw how much fluid was in there when I started. And I just added about three more syringes uh, worth of fluid. And uh, I had to do that in order for it to finish closing. So that fluid is pouring out somewhere, it's seeking out somewhere. Again, with enough level, enough fluid, this roll bar actually works. Um, the, so the pump is, is, is good. The pump is functioning properly, but the fluid level is not consistent and there's a leak somewhere in the system. That's what I have to figure out, where the leak is. Again, it didn't finish closing on its own. You heard the pump. Uh, it wasn't really the pump, I think it's just the operation. You, it, it was louder than usual. So that's similar to maybe air siphoning in or being pushed out, fluid being pushed out. Um, and so it, it was louder than it should have been. And I had to finish I had to add fluid for it to finish operation, for it to finish closing. Um, off camera with the top still back like it was, I opened that up. I had access to this, thankfully, because the trunk lid was flipped back this way. So I had full access to that when I pulled this back. And so off camera, I had to add three syringe worth of uh, fluid in order to get it to finish the closing process. So the pump is working there's a leak somewhere i'll add more fluid for i'll add more fluid for operation purposes if i ever need to retract it but i don't plan on really using this top for now until i figure out where that leak is coming from hopefully the leak shows itself maybe it doesn't but it, there is a leak somewhere all right so that's what i have to figure out so this is part ownership of an sl guys this is what you have to go through sometimes 
if you want your top to work you got to keep the system up and running now that's with the convertible top i don't apply the same thing to your abc abc is this ability to drive with a functioning suspension if abc goes out you cannot drive the car the top goes out you can drive the car it is now a hard top it is a coupe it's not a convertible right <laughs> if it's not working it's just a hard top coupe this car is beautiful with the top uh, top up or down so you can still get to your destination you still can use your trunk for for groceries or or golf clubs whatever you just can't uh, drop the top now most of you guys out here didn't buy this to to have a hard top you wanted the top down you didn't buy it to be a coupe you bought it to be a convertible and so you want it to be a convertible well you got to put in work sometimes to make sure the convertible continues to work and that's what i have to do here so here you guys have a real-time issue that i'm having with my 2003 sl55 and i gotta figure it out so i'll keep you guys updated thanks for watching more information to come i have to retract one of my earlier statements from the forums i was told that this lower one the one closer to the rear um is for the air release when you're um when you're adding fluid to the top one but i don't think that's true because i didn't see any air bubbles coming out of here the lower one stayed uh they had fluid there was fluid sitting and it did not react when i was adding fluid instead air was escaping from the one that i was actually adding fluid to so just angling the syringe and the tube in there that you know allowing air to escape as you are adding fluid was the key of getting uh, the fluid in there a little faster but that bottom one i don't think that's actually necessary to uh, unscrew